Good evening and welcome to this evening's presentation, Shopping Responsibly During the Holidays. This is a presentation of the Faith-Based Alliance, National Foundation for Credit Counseling's Faith-Based Alliance. We thank you for joining us. We're going to give it a couple of minutes to let some more people join. But we're glad you're here and we promise you will have some takeaways from this evening's event. So thank you. Hang in there for just a couple minutes. Okay, so we're going to start and let anybody who joins um, in a minute, they'll catch up. Uh, I'm going to start by passing it over to, to Pastor Murphy, if you would say a few words, sir. Sure, uh, thank you. you. Thank you, Herman. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to tonight's workshop. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Kevin uh, H. Murphy, and I serve as the Associate Pastor of Christian Education and Training at the E9 Tabernacle Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, under the leadership of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Alan E. Waller. Uh, E9 Tabernacle is the largest African-American church in Pennsylvania, uh, and we seek to provide holistic ministry in all areas of life to all ages, and that includes financial literacy. To that end, uh, we are excited to be a part of this uh, NFCC Faith-Based Alliance, and it's certainly an honor for me to be the representative on, on this team as we provide for you financial information and resources, and not only to individuals, but also to businesses across the nation. Uh, again, it's my honor to work with this team, and I thank God for you and for you being here tonight. And now we will hear from uh, Sister Mondo Webb. Thank you, Reverend Murphy. I appreciate the, the toss. Uh, my name is Monda Webb, and I'm an affordable lending manager at Freddie Mac and our mission and community engagement uh, under uh, single family acquisition and education and outreach. It's a really big, long name and title just to say that we do what we can to support our nonprofit organizations across the country to help make home possible. So I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to hear from Ms. Cora Fulmore. I've got my pen, I've got my paper mm -hmm. because she is definitely dropping nuggets anytime she speaks. So make sure you get ready because you are about to learn some things new. So thanks again for having me, Herman, and I hope that all of you enjoy this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Monda. Thank you so much. And good evening and welcome again. Uh, I want to start by thanking our planning committee, our presenters, and certainly you, our listening audience. As you've heard, my name is Herman Palmer, and I am the Vice President of Outreach and Inclusion for the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, or the NFCC. Before we get started with tonight's presentation, I want to tell you a little bit about our organization. We were founded in 1951. Our mission is to empower consumers to address their financial challenges, to allow them to take charge of their futures. We have close to 300 member offices serving all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico, with over 50 member agencies and over 1,100 certified counselors who are ready, willing, and able to help anyone. And by anyone, I mean everybody. We look at multicultural communities of color, multi uh, military families uh, and veterans, small business owners and student loan borrowers, just to name a few. When we look at the areas that we counsel. We look at general financial counseling, housing counseling, small business owner coaching, 
and student uh, loan counseling as well as bankruptcy counseling. So I'm excited about tonight's presentation because I think it is very timely uh, to, to have an update or a perspective on how to shop responsibly during the holiday season. Tonight, we have the benefit of Ms. Cora Fulmore, who is the president of Diversified Resource Network. And she is amazing. She's an expert on a great many things. So trust me when I say you will be blessed when you hear the words that she has to share, the insight she has to offer. And so without further ado, I now turn it over to Ms. Cora Fulmore. Cora, educate the people. Thank you so much, Herman. I, I truly enjoy um, just being with this group and the team. Uh, this is a fabulous team, and we're here to try and share as much information as we can to the um, consumer public. And, and thank you so much, Monda. Uh, I appreciate your <laughs> kind words. I, I really do. And if I can just see the, the PowerPoint in uh, Eric, Let's see if we can pull that up. All right, very good, very good. Tonight's um, presentation is all about shopping responsibly, but I want to talk also about really what makes us get out of our norm and spend more money than we should. Uh, I'm I'm excited about this particular group working with. Uh, all of the ministers, Freddie Mac, and everyone has been really a joy in getting the information out to everyone. So uh, again, this is a powerful group, and please take notes. If you've got questions or comments, please don't hesitate to go to the chat box. Herman, uh, Manda, and others are perusing the chat box just to see if there's any questions or concerns or even um, something that you'd like to share what you're experiencing in your particular area. Let's take a look at uh, where we are right now. Thank you so much, uh, Eric. We can move on. Next slide. So let's go ahead and get started, folks. Thank you, Eric. You know, contrary to what people think, money does not fall from the sky, right? There's no money tree in our backyard. As we go through today's presentation, Eric advances to the next slide. Uh, we're going to see what are people doing right now in 2023. If you take a look at this particular slide, holiday shopping is on the incline. People are spending money like they've never spent before. Just look at the stats. This is an updated stat that comes from TransUnion uh, from as of October of 2023. 29% of Americans are say they plan to spend more money than they did last year. Just think about it. Where are you in the 29%? Look at the other stats. 21% said that they will spend more than a thousand dollars now i you know i i'm not having i don't have anything to say about those that can spend a thousand dollars that's okay uh on christmas shopping but look at the other uh folks that have been surveyed 30 percent said that they'll spend between 500 and a thousand 29 percent between 250 and 500 and at the very bottom only four percent uh are saying that they're going to spend less than a hundred dollars on Christmas shopping. Let's let's take a look at the other slides. Here's the real deal, folks. Just think about it. Our savings pattern, the personal savings rate right now, is down. Back during COVID, the personal savings rate was right at about eleven to twelve percent. So we're only at 3.4% right now that we're saving. And before we get into January of 2024, it's going to go down even more. So just be on the lookout. I, I encourage you to take a look at the Bureau of Economic Analysis in order to just see where the rate is going. Uh, this particular report was pulled back October 27th. Uh, the next report will be available again November 30th. Next slide. 
You know, here, here's something. We are influenced by a lot of things. A lot of things cause us to go out and shop. We're going to talk a little bit about some of those influencers and then how can we how can we deal with those influencers and how can we not get all caught up in shopping and th and that's something that we've got to be very very careful of you know this particular report is as of October 5th looking at what uh, what consumers plan to start shopping as early as now, people are spending money right now um, in order to get ready for Christmas. And some of us are spending it without thinking. You know, the most significant factor that influences all of us, and you've got to think about it, is the economy. What's going on in the economy, what, whether the situation is good or bad. And we've heard the news report, our own culture, has something to do with the way we spend our money, um, our, our family, social um, social gatherings and and um, things that are getting uh, consumers to to be more influenced by um, getting out there and spending more money, particularly if it's going to improve their social standing with their peers. There's also personal issues that causes us or influence our spending habits and psychological things that have an impact on our spending as well. What we learned over the years about Christmas, our beliefs about making folks happy, all of those things have a resounding impact on whether we save or whether we spend more money. And so we've got to be real about it. Those things can impact us in the future and cause us to spend more money. Let's take a look at the next slide. Can I, can I, can I just jump in here real quick in terms of culture? This is especially true for kids who are trying to be cool, who are yeah. trying to break in with the in crowd, so the clothes they wear, the clothes they ask for, uh, that's they're very brand oriented. And then on the social front, all of us, whether we want to admit it or not, all of us have been influenced by social. I oh. got one word for you, dating. Now, if you want to get a date, you want to dress a certain way, send a signal like, yes, I am cool. I have it going on. Notice my, my gear that I'm wearing. So all of us can be susceptible. And if we're not now, we were at one time. So I just want to make sure everybody's grounded in reality and well, have a perspective. And all of these things affect what's called our money story. And we're going to talk about the money stories a little later on. And Herman, I encourage you, Manda, and also uh, the our pastor here, to Kevin, to please chime in as we talk about these things. Uh, take a look at this advertisement. It really, advertisers are very persuasive and they use persuasive techniques in order to get us to move, get us to buy. And we're talking about shopping responsibly. It's very difficult for us to maintain our composure, particularly if we're being marketed far beyond our abilities to resist. So, I mean, they look at the, the whole emotional thing, they apply peer pressure, social norms, really, they're really trying to, to get us to a point where we cannot resist. Um, if you can go to the next bullet for me, please. Thank you so much, Harry. And so all of these things Im uh, impact our buying norms. It, it impacts our buying norms. So take a look at this picture and go to the chat box real quick if you don't mind. Tell me what's the first thing that you think about when you look at this picture. Just tell me real quick, right off the top, don't give it a lot of thought. Just tell me what is the first thing you think about. And I'm gonna ask Monda, when you see this picture, what do you think about? And you could come back on the screen if you don't mind, Monda. Mm -hmm. Let me know. What do you think about when you see this picture? I'm thinking I'm getting ready to get a nice cold drink. 
uh, not just a cold drink, but a cold, but a cold Coca Cola. That's Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and and the polar bear was used by Coca Cola and also by um, I, I believe it was what's the other um, cola drink out there? Pepsi. 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 You're absolutely right by Pepsi. But Coca-Cola came up with this particular ad first and Pepsi copied their ad with a little. This is a very friendly polar bear. He looks very <laughs> friendly. But when you look at the Pepsi polar bear and I want you all to take a look at it later on, it's totally different, totally different polar bear altogether. So what were some of the comments that came from the audience, Herman? You know, I think they're being stiff tonight because <laughs> I, I'm not seeing any. I'm not, so I, when I don't see any, I'm gonna offer my own. Maybe this will liven them up. All right, let's go to the next. <laughs> but 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 wait, hold, before we go, I want you to make note. Yeah. As a marketer, we want to drive not just your behavior, but how you interact with the ad. So you'll note that the Coke bottle is red. It's the first thing it draws your eye. Absolutely. They're trying to invite you in. And then you see how at the top, the drink is a little transparent, clear through that, and it has some white space on it. That's to appeal to your sense of thirst, make you thirsty. And the cold, the polar bear, it's best when it's cold. So Absolutely. they want to make sure you consume it in the right environment so that you have a positive experience and you will repeat the behavior. Yeah, without a doubt. And and all of those things have have an impact. And it's important that we be mindful of that as as we look at uh, advertisement during the holidays uh, specifically. N next bullet, please, Eric. What year was the polar bear used? If you can answer that question, this should drive you to the chat box. If you can answer this question, there is a gift card waiting for you in your name that you can spend during the holidays. So tell me, what year was the polar bear used? We don't have a lot of time, so go to the chat box real quickly. Just take a stab at it and, and we'll see what you think and, and hopefully we'll start having some folks to chime in because I'd, I'd love to be able to give away, give away this gift card. Oh, yeah. Herman, yeah. Um, someone said that there's no chat box option. They're in a Q&A. Okay. So can they go to oh, the actual okay. chat? Hold up. Let, let me go to the Q&A. Let's see what's going on in the Q&A. Yes. Thank yeah, you. I'm not seeing anything in the Q&A either. Wait, oh, it's coming up. Oh. I don't see anything in the Q&A. Oh, so gosh. we'll check both. We'll check both. Okay. But what I will say is to really get you engaged with products, they're going to market to your senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. That's why when you walk into the department stores, you get assaulted practically with the perfume people. They want you to feel it, experience it. Like, oh, yeah. yes. Doesn't that smell lovely? So just be ready. We're, we're really trying to help you understand how to survive this whole holiday shopping thing. And also in the shopping, um, ex the excitement of the shopping with still some money in your pocket. And so money now, we got two, we got two responses. We got one that says anonymous 1997 and we got another anonymous 1978. Okay. Okay. Oh, Those are we got Mercedes said 1993. <laughs> and we've got 1982. Oh, okay. hey. all right. All right. So uh, if you go to the next bullet for me, please, Eric, you'll see the date. 1992. Oh. Ah, Mercedes. Mercedes. So Mercedes, please send in uh, um, your address and we will take that and we'll make sure a gift card comes your way first thing tomorrow morning. So right? Mercedes, you can send it to me. Send it to H. Palmer at nfcc.org. I'll put eight. it in the chat. Okay, thank you. And uh, we'll get you. We'll get you connected. So now, uh -oh. if it's a gift child, I don't know what the gift card is, but if it's a gift card for Mercedes Benz, I want you to <laughs> take me out for a ride. Share the well. That, I can assure you that it won't be because I'm trying to live the dream myself and uh, manage uh, the money as well. So very good, Mercedes. Very good. Um, let's go on, please. 
There's a whole psychological part. Herman alluded to that earlier uh, with us spending money and the marketers are really trying to nudge us to go ahead and buy. And we've got to be very careful about that. Sometimes the, the way that they do this is to overwhelm our stimuli. You know, by overwhelming our stimuli, it makes it very difficult for us to be able to resist all of the marketing strategies that are being bombarded to us during the holidays. And so just be mindful when you go into a mall, you're smelling wonderful scents in the mall. You're seeing beautiful lights in the mall. You're seeing a lot of folks smiling in the mall. All of those are overwhelming things that that overwhelm our stimuli and causes us to be off guard. And because we're off guard, we're more likely to spend more money. And so it's important that you understand the plot, the, the way in which they're uh, trying to suck you into the stores. Like many, many uh, companies, they may have someone at the very front door and they're giving away free things. They're trying to invite you into the store. They're telling you about the sales that they have and all of those other things in order to catch you off guard and cause you to spend more money. Next slide. Oh, Ms. Cora, what yeah. about um, even if you're online shopping and you there's the um, several different companies out there like Afterpay and Affirm where yeah. you don't have to pay everything now. You can only pay $20 a month and if approved. Yeah, that's a plaw as well. And we're going to talk about that because I think that is one of the biggest um, schemes that are coming our way. And we have to be very, very careful in order to protect our, our money, our interests, and all of that. Um, you know, the whole psychological part of it is really to deplete us of what we have as a resistance to stop us from overspending. And when they de deplete us of what we use to resist all of this, we tend to overspend. And it's, it's just as simple as that. If you understand the game, you can best fight the game. I don't understand football, basketball, or baseball. That's not one of my hobbies. So I can't talk intelligently about those activities, but I know that there are strategies that come after all of us during the holidays. The packages are beautiful. The store looks beautiful and it's inviting. And because it's so inviting, uh, we tend to spend. The, the folks are trying to greet us and all of that causes us to want to spend more money. Let's, let's take a look at the next slide. Thank you. You know, remember the, the marketers are really working on whatever our flaws are. And they're trying to nudge us to buy. So remember during uh, COVID-19, a lot of consumers came to the realization um, they better experience life now because life is not guaranteed. And because of that, folks made a decision. I'm going to travel more. I'm going to see the world. I'm going to spend more money because there's no guarantee that I'm going to be here because we kept hearing the news. So there are other things that are motivating us right now. We're seeing all of the things that are going on throughout the world. And um, it's a motivator. It's a motivator that moves us to the next um, level. Let's go to the next slide. So, Cora, what I hear you saying is that our mental state mm -hmm. has a profound and direct impact on our financial state. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Because when we control our spending, when we control our, our spending, it reduces the stress. It, it, it allows us to um, be a little bit more positive. 
Um, we're less likely to be a, have an aggressive behavior. When we manage, when we control our spending, it leads to positive things. Now, I'm not saying don't spend at all because that can lead to something negative. Um, I'm saying if we control our spending, it leads to more positive things. You can maintain a, maintain a better relationship with your spouse and your children. You're not always on the edge. You're not so jumpy. You move better through life by managing your, your finances. Next slide. So, you know, the whole Christmas giving thing, it, it's, it's something that has been played for several years. It, it, it started a long time ago. In, in the 17th century, gift giving was not about running to a, a department store or anything of that nature department stores came in later on um th there was a whole uh, scheme with the department stores because there was a way to get you excited and and get us to spend more money and it's not just you it's all of us um, to get excited and all of us to spend more money. And sometimes they're very successful and sometimes they're not. So over the years, there's been a change in the way that we've given. If I even, um, if I ask the question of, of the panelists that are on the call right now, if I ask Monda, um, Herman, if, if I ask Eric, if I ask Pastor Kevin, what was it like for you growing up and, and what was Christmas like for you? And all of us would give a different answer. So I, if you don't mind unmuting yourself, Manda, uh, just tell us from, from your perspective growing up, what was it like for you? Well, half of my young adult life, um, I didn't celebrate it at all because my dad was Jehovah's Witness. Okay. And then as I... Um, got a little older after college, um, I did start to celebrate Christmas. And at that point, being mature, I just had a different attitude towards it. I just I just liked the the spirit of the holiday, the kindness of people, mm -hmm. and just kind of being able to um, put a smile on someone's face. Uh, just, you know, whether to, and the gifts don't have to be expensive, I think it's the thoughtfulness of it that that I, you know, can appreciate. So yeah, um, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, religion plays a big part in it as well. Um, depending upon the religion, um, you you would spend a lot of money for Christmas um, or you would not spend a lot of money for Christmas, depending on the religion. And I appreciate you telling us that. Herman, what about you? So I, for me, Christmas <laughs> was so much fun. Yeah, the toys were great. But I, I made a list. We didn't have to go to school. That's a winner. That's a winner right there. I knew I was going to see my family because we went to everybody's house. And we lived in the Bronx. We'd go see family in the Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn, Teaneck. So you're going to see your family. We have food. And I like to eat. But, like, the food you didn't get all the time, like turkey, stuffing, mac and cheese, greens, turnips, all the good stuff. You know, you get the cobbler, your mouth starts salivating. And then as a kid also, you got to see cartoons like Charlie Brown, The Grinch, Rudolph, and there was one other one. But like, you could only see them in this holiday season. So if you missed them, it wasn't like now where you just, oh, I'm just going to go and pick up YouTube or something. No, no, no. You had to wait a whole nother year. So it was exciting. The toys were one thing, but the other things, the other treats, and it was snow. So that was fun too. Playing in the snow, sleigh riding, building snowmen, snowball fights, all that good stuff. Well, I grew up in the South, in, in South Florida, no snow. Uh, Christmas was a little bit different. There was eight of us, four boys and four girls. And, and mama and daddy would have a Christmas tree. We would have gifts under the Christmas tree, but the gifts were no, nothing like what they are today. Uh, there, there was no iPad, there was no electronic or anything of that nature. We were happy to have a doll or maybe a bike. And uh, if you got one gift, that was it. And you may get an orange, an apple or some nuts uh, under the tree. And, and that was it. And we were satisfied with that. 
it, it was not a problem at all. So, you know, sometimes, and, and I know that uh, Pastor Kevin would like to, to say something, but he can't unmute himself right now. But, you know, Christmas has changed and the marketers have been um, definitely part of the process with this particular change. And I'm sure some of you would say the same thing. If, you, if you'd like to share, in the uh, Q&A box, that would be great. And just share your thoughts and ideas because it, it is um, totally different and it has an impact. So let's go to the next slide. So what you said in terms of what your Christmas was like, a lot of that dealt with expectations, how they were set for you. So yeah. if you set certain expectations, that helps to manage the expense of Christmas. But that expectation develops your money story. And that's what it's all about. And until we realize that there is a money story that comes with us, that has that makes us think and buy some of the things that we buy, uh, we will, you know, we won't ever know what's causing me to do whatever I do. So it's okay to shop. It's okay to go out. But what we're trying to um to say is to not break the bank. And it's good to give. We're not trying to create any new money stories. We know that every person has their own money story, their own belief system, and that's fine. But what, we're, what we are saying because of the work that we do in this space and because of the things that we've seen in this space is trying to uh, encourage people to manage their money and to not overspend just for the holidays. You know, don't break the bank over one day. I've seen individuals that have bought over a thousand dollars worth of gifts and they don't get as much of a gift that they gave and then that causes some angst within them. And we're saying that you can still have a happy life without breaking the bank and, and still be able to enjoy the holidays. Let's take a look at the next slide. Thank you. So I want to give a uh, feedback. Mercedes said, for me, Christmas was about the wonderful food and fancy clothes and table setting. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Mercedes. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. And, yeah, absolutely. I remember my mom cooking the best meals during the holidays. And, and yeah, we, we did get a limited amount of gifts, but that didn't stop the excitement. We would all get out and play every Christmas morning. We would all have something special um, under the tree. It would all be something special to us. Um, but my parents realized that there was eight children that still had to live on and that they were responsible for. And so this holiday was not the biggest holiday uh, for us. Uh, Thanksgiving really was because there is when we had all sorts of goodies, not so much as gifts, but the opportunity to fellowship with families and all of that. So let's talk about our money story. And, and please feel free to share as Mercedes had, in either the Q&A box, the chat box, whatever you have available to you. We'd like to hear your comments. So let's look at the money stories. Let's go to the next slide. We all have money stories and Eric, please bring them all up at the same time if you don't mind. Very good. Um, all of us have money stories, you know, um, or family norms. It's all different. Um, yes, Herman told you about his money story or his family norm during the holidays. We all have them. Our stories is, is shaped by our personal financial journey and our life experience. That's what our money stories are shaped by. And so as, as we're talking about this, I want you to think about what is my money story? Because we all have a money story regardless. Life challenges can also shape your money story. The financial traumas can also shape your money story. A financial trauma could be anything that impacts your financials, finances during your life uh, growing up or um, 
now, even now. So it's a conversation really about your journey. What has that journey been like? And until we can um, address it ourselves and address what our money story is, we'll never be able to work through whatever it is. We all have it. I, I was taught by my parents on how to handle money, but my mom, my mom was the one that dealt with the money in the family. She was the saver. And so right now I'm the saver in the family. And, and, and it's all because of my money story. Um, so uh, just think about your money story. Think about the things that have impacted you uh, with your finances as, as you've grown up. And that'll tell you a lot about yourself. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Cora, I had a little yeah. comment about that. Um, when we talk about you know the money stories and, and how we navigate through life, with yeah. money and 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 i learned just a few years ago with lisa nicholson that money is a good conversation to have oftentimes especially in our culturally in our families we just it's something we don't discuss right yeah. so but it's important um it's important and i mean even with susie ormond if mm -hmm. uh and this i don't know if this is well known but um her what we call the fishbowl moment which kind of shaped how she looked at the rest of the world was created when um her her dad ran a a, a store when mm -hmm. she was growing up and the store caught on fire and she literally watched her father run back in a burning building because he wanted to get the money box mm -hmm. everything he had was in that store yeah and you can imagine if anyone can imagine what kind of fear and anxiety you go through if you see your father run into a burning store. So he was so motivated by getting that box that he risked his life for it. And mm -hmm. you see what Susie Ormond has become, you know, yeah. which is probably a direct result of uh, of seeing that. And, and as you talked about the trauma of it. So she used it for good mm -hmm. and has become this major financial guru. But that was just that was a lot to to witness and take in at a young age. And, and it impacts you. It impacts you mm -hmm. life. Um, not, not only do I, did I take some of my behavior from my parents, um, my mom on the side of it. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh -oh. Can you mute? Uh, Eric, can you mute to that number? In our, in our they are. We, we, yeah. Hello? Got it. Go ahead, Cora. Okay, okay they made it. Um, and and not only do did I take my mom's behavior for saving, but I also took some of my dad's behavior as well. And and daddy was a great provider, excellent provider, but daddy was a job hopper. And uh, he always hopped jobs. So I've been on 50,000 jobs, it seems like, over my lifetime. And, and it's okay. I always tried to move for something better. So we also have money stories that we deal with during the Christmas um, season and our stories around Christmas can all be different. These are scripts that were written for us early on. Some we've adopted and some we've not adopted. One, here's one. The more you spend, the more you, uh, the more love you show. There's a lot of families that believe that I'm going to spend more money for my children and they're, I'm showing more love to them. They're going to love me more. It takes the joy out of giving if you pinch pennies. There are a lot of people that believe that and, and that is part of their story. It's the season for giving lavishly, not for being a Scrooge. And you know, nobody wants to be a Scrooge, no one. And so they spend money because that they don't have because they think it's not gonna make them likable. Um, and then lastly, I need to give my kids more than I got when I was a child. That's a money story that we play out every holiday season. And so we've got to be careful. We can rewrite that money story. And that's something that's important that we need to know. It can be rewritten. Let's take a look at the next slide. There's this new thing, y'all. It's called money dis uh, mafia. mafia. Um, 
Morphia, I'm sorry, money dysmorphia. I heard about this this week and I wanted to share it with you. Money dysmorphia. Um, does anybody know what money dysmorphia is? If you do, go to the Q&A box and just share it or chat box, let us know what you think because money dysmorphia is something that can have a hold of us during the holidays and we gotta know what this particular uh, thing is and how it affects us. Let's take a look at the next slide, if you don't mind. It causes us to have a distorted view of how we see money and can lead to poor money decisions. A lot of us may be suffering from money dysmor dys dysmorphia and it's a financial state where self-perception doesn't match reality. It affects how we see our money, our views of money. We don't have enough. Sometimes we feel that we don't have enough. We may, but we, we still believe we don't. We always want more. More is not enough. There's always more, more, more. Uh, the money, money makes the world go round. And, and I thought about this myself when I, when I was doing some research on this particular topic. I remember when my husband and I were uh, very young, just it's still in college, but we were working. And I remember making $23,000 a year and we would do our taxes. And all I can think of was this, boy, if we could make $10,000 more, we're gonna be rich. And then we did. And then it was, if I could only make X number of dollars more, then we'll be rich. And then we did. There was never any satisfaction. And then I said, well, if we could only make $100,000, and we did and it never changed. So money dysmorphia can cause us to never be satisfied with where we are. We always, we, it doesn't matter how much money we have. It doesn't matter how much money we make. We will always want more. Let's go to the next slide. One thing I, I'd like to say is yeah. as, we, as we go into the holidays, um, no matter which one you celebrate, and especially if you have children, understand those children are paying attention. Whether you know it or not, they are watching your behavior and they're watching how you react to certain things. Mm -hmm. They are watching how you react to receiving a gift. Mm -hmm. They are watching how you react to giving a gift. Absolutely. Your behavior reflects your values and your children pick up your values. So be mindful of the role model you are to them and by your actions, the future you're establishing by your behavior for them to follow suit. You're absolutely right. Our money story starts at a very early age and we are influenced by those that are around us. Often it are the it's the adults in our in our lives. It could be an aunt, an uncle, our parents, it, it could be a number of people that have influence over us and it causes to shape our money story. There's never enough. We're constantly chasing more stuff and uh, or we're at rock bottom in our minds. We're at rock bottom. We could have a million dollars in the bank, but our mind is telling us that we're at rock bottom. I work Thanks. with uh, go to church with a young man that is a financial planner. And, and you know, one of the stories that he's he shared with all of us uh, of some of the, without giving names, but of how individuals that have a lot of money with their firm and, and some of these individuals find themselves never being satisfied. They always feel that it's never enough. Again, with the definition of money dysmorphia, it's all about not dealing with reality. And yes. then I also want to say your reality isn't necessarily your neighbor's reality or your, your family member's reality. For example, if you are a father with a wife and two children, all right, your demands on your income are different than 
say you have a really dear friend who's not married, when that dear friend eats, his whole family eats because it's just him. You got to provide for your family, perhaps in collaboration with your wife. Your reality is different. Your priorities have to be different. He doesn't have to worry about insurance to take care of anybody if something happens to him. You, on the other hand, do. So that's an added demand on your finances that's not available to have a fancy car or buy a fancy gift. The way you show your love is through providing appropriate stops and stops for risk, but also emulating proper behavior that they can adopt and carry them through life successfully. So. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at the next slide, please. So we can break the cycle and um, these are some things that you can do in order to break the cycle from uh, money dysmorphia. Uh, be clear on what your needs and wants are. We talk about that all the time. Look at um, what what do I really need and, and what are my wants? Make sure there's a balance. Put a number on your wants and, and do a budget. If you want it, that's fine. There's no problem with wanting it, but put a budget, do a budget and, and put a number to it. Assess your relationship with money. What is that relationship? You know, one of the things that I've always been taught, it, do you have respect for money? How is the money in your wallet or in your purse right now? Is it all crumbled up? Um, or is it neatly fold in the right spot in your wallet or right spot in your in your purse? You know, so what's your relationship with it? As, assess, um, unlearn old habits, particularly the bad ones. If, if you've got some old habits that have been developed uh, as it relates to credit, they get their money when I get mine. Um, I, I never pay anything on time. Um, it's not necessary. They'll, you know, it, it's not going to hurt me. Um, you, you, you really have to unlearn those bad habits or unlearn old habits that started many years ago when you were a kid. Um, learn how to navigate money. It, it, it's the fuel to get you to the destination versus being the destination. Act now, get clear on what you really need to do uh, to live the life you want. And, and, you know, it's up to you. Whatever life you want, you, you can have it, but you need to know what it takes to live that life. What is it? What's involved in you living that life? What are the resources you need to fill in the gap? to make it happen. I want this life, so how am I gonna make that happen? Do I have to work more than 24 hours? Uh, what is the, the, the magic number for me to get it? Is it worth it? And then here's one thing that, that I think is really important and we often don't even think about it. Watch out for the lifestyle creepers. There are a lot of lifestyle creepers that creep into our lives and we don't even know it. Sometimes we feel richer than we really are. Sometimes we think, like I said, if I only got, if we could only make 10,000 more, we're going to be rich. Sometimes we think we are more, we live a lifestyle of the rich and famous and we're really not. We don't have a good handle on our finances. So we've got to be realistic. Going into 2024, it's critical that we be realistic about our money. We sit down and do a budget and, and not let the holiday shoppers rob us of stability that we can have with our families and, and being able to help those uh, that we truly love. Let's go to the next slide. So you can break the cycle. What do we suggest? Uh, create an automatic uh, savings program. Uh, there are a lot that you can do. 401k account, uh, match savings programs that you can have at your uh, job. Uh, if you're going to indulge in anything, because we don't want to script anybody of being able to enjoy life. If you're going to indulge, Put a price on it, look at it and say, how much money can I spend for this? And, and I know that there are counselors on the call uh, from all over the country. If, if there are other helpful tips that you'd like to share, please go to the question box and share that and either 
uh, Manda or Herman will share your thoughts with the entire group. And, and I'm delighted to see that there's so many of you that are on the call tonight because it's showing that there is indeed um, a need for this particular topic and uh, a need for us to share. And, and it's not just for professionals, but it's it's for mom and pa and, and it's for individuals who are have children to share this information with their children as well. Um, so Eric, if you can go to the next slide. Herman, I, I know you've got a comment, please. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing I want to say on that last slide, treat yourself like your bill, make you your priority. You, by you, I mean your lifestyle and your financial future. Pay yourself first. Yeah, absolutely. We're so quick to pay all these, all our bills. Oh, I got to pay this bill. I got to pay that bill. And yeah, you do because you want to maintain good credit. But as you factor in building your budget, include you in there. And so part of doing that and paying yourself first, when you automate your saving, that helps. When you invest in your 401k, that helps because that means that comes without you even having the money come through your hands. Pay yourself first. Treat you like you're a bill. Right. That's absolutely right. So, um, you know, money stories can undermine our savings. It it happened. And thank you so much, Herman. Um, so what are the stories um, then you're telling yourselves what what are the stories that you're telling yourself we we all tell ourselves stories and um here are some thoughts more money can make things better sometimes more money brings in more problems i've known of people who have won the lottery and it's brought nothing but problems to their family um money is is bad that's a bad uh, thought. I mean, money is bad. Money is very helpful to not have money can be bad or having money can be bad. I don't deserve money. I used to think that way in all honesty um, because of the way that that I was raised, the church that I attended. A lot of times I thought money was, was sinful and, and I didn't need money. So again, it's about your mentality around this subject. Um, so sometimes we can undermine our, our own savings program. Um, I don't deserve to spend money. That's not what we're saying. You do, but manage it properly. You will never, there will never be enough money. There will always be enough money. Two conflicting statements, but they both mean pretty much the same. It can undermine our ability to save money. And so with that mindset, it can disrupt our entire saving program and, and cause us to have nothing at the end of the day. Money is unimportant to me. Money will give me meaning. Does it really? It's not nice or necessary to talk about money. I think Herman said earlier, or maybe it was Manda, we should talk about money. There's nothing wrong with talking about money, but we have been programmed to never talk about money in a um, in a group, to never talk about it, to never um, mention money. We, we're taught on our jobs to never talk about um, how much money you make. We're ta taught by our families, don't discuss money with anyone. That's not the proper thing to do. Um, if you're good, this is the one that I'm like, I used to feel this way when I was young and crazy in college. If, if I'm good, the universe will always supply all of my needs. And I see Herman shaking his head. Not always so, right? And, and, and some of you probably feel the same way. I used to think that way. I don't anymore. I know that I have to be, I have to have a budget. I have to think about and have a plan in place in order for me to manage my financial affairs. Uh, Herman, you've got a comment. Let's get to that. Yes. So mm -hmm. if, if, if you don't talk about money, how will you learn? Yeah. If you don't talk about money, how are you going to identify if you have enough, where you're going to invest, what you should do? And, and there's an old adage, the squeaky wheel gets gets the grease. Yeah. I, did, I, I want money. <laughs> I mean, 
But it's not for money's sake. I want it for what it can do for my family. I want it for Absolutely. the experiences it can provide, such as educating my family, such yeah. as preparing for a retirement. So for that reason, I have a plan and I spend responsibly. But we have got to tear down the barrier that says, "Keep be, zip it, be quiet, don't talk about it, because you won't mm -hmm. learn, you won't identify your opportunities, and you'll always be stuck in a rut. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's right. why the faith-based initiative was formed because there is a need for this discussion. And if you've not, if this is your first time attending one of the, the webinars that the faith-based initiative has put on, I want to encourage you to check us out because there are several classes that we offer throughout the year, not just about uh, Christmas and holiday spending, shopping responsibly. We feel that that is necessary, but we also provide information on insurance. We bring folks in to talk about investments and uh, just a host of things that we think is important to you to be able to um, not to not so much to amass a lot of money, but to be able to have some calmness with it within your financial affairs, because we feel that that is so important. So as we move through the major spending season, there's some other things that we have to do, right? And let's take a look at these other slides. And Eric, if you could just move uh, uh, pretty quickly as we go through the slide. I want you to be aware of one uh, particular uh, thing that's happening. And we talked about this, uh, Monday and I talked about this earlier, buy now, pay later. Uh, this is something that has come on the, the scene and a lot of families are being taken advantage uh, by this one thoughtful uh, program to try and help consumers that um, don't have enough money. They're going to allow them to buy it now and pay for it later. When this particular um, opportunity was first introduced, it was in introduced in a way that you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to be reported to the credit bureau. This is an easy way for you to obtain it now and pay for it later. Well, I thought about that. This isn't the first thing something like this came on the scene. We've heard about payday loans. We've heard about uh, title loans. We've heard about predatory lending schemes and all of that that were announced to be able to help us through the process. Now, these buy now, pay laters, I'm, I'm just going to let you know, they are going to be reported to the Bureau. CFPB did a big issue a few months ago, maybe a year ago, uh, talking about buy now, pay later and the unfairness of buy now, pay later loans on consumers, uh, that consumers had buy now, pay laters that were not re being reported to the Bureau, which was unfair to the lenders that were extending credit to, to consumers. So buy now, pay laters will eventually be reported to all credit bureaus. They're, they're in the works right now for that to happen. Another thing that a lot of people thought with buy now, pay laters, and this was part of the game that they sold. Well, it's not going to be reported to the Bureau, so you don't have to worry about it having an impact on your credit. So what we found out later in the research, just this year, it came up last year and this year, that a lot of the buy now, pay laters are now late. They're not paying later. And there is an enormous amount of loans that are currently delinquent and is having an impact on individuals' credit, credit scores, and all of that. That is something that we never thought would happen. So beware of the buy now, pay later opportunities that will be presented to you in um, during this holiday season. They're not at just um, online because that's how it was originally developed during COVID to be available to you um, when you're doing online purchases. But now every store and I, would, I was about to say every store and their mama, but every store has a buy now, pay later opportunity for us. And I, I, I would not recommend that you take advantage of it. A, you know? a lot of, and a lot of times we think it's such a great deal. 
that yeah. it's on sale. So it's like 50% off. You're like, oh, I'll get it now and I'll pay it over time. If they're, depending upon the interest rate, the finance charges, what you think you're saving, you wind up paying a premium. By that, I mean, say you're buying something that's $10 for $5, or you think you're buying it for $5. But if you finance it over a long enough period, or if the interest rate is high enough, instead of paying that $5, instead of paying that $10, you wind up paying $12. So you thought you were getting a deal and you wound up paying a premium. So chances are, if you can't pay for it right then or in a reasonable time, you're better off without it because the damage it does to your credit score really elevates the price of everything else you're going to pay for going forward. You're absolutely right. You know, it's this old, old thing, old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. It's, it's, it is. That's all. Uh, let's take a look at the next slide. So, we really want to then uh, talk about um, the whole holiday shopping. What What is it all about? Let's take a look at the next slide, please. During the holiday season, a lot of things go on. Um, you, you don't take a look at it. You, you don't even consider. One of the things that we strongly recommend is that you pull a copy of your credit report. Next slide, please. You can pull a copy of your credit report from annualcreditreport.com. Currently, they are still offering a free copy of your credit report every uh, week. You, you want to do that. You want to at least see what's being reported. If you've not pulled a copy of your credit report um, from annualcreditreport.com, I would encourage you to do so. Um, understand what's being reported. Understand uh, whether or not the information being reported on you is, is accurate or inaccurate. Next slide, please. You also want to take a look at your credit score. Let's, let's pop all of them up for me, Eric, if you don't mind. Understand the credit score and how this credit score thing works. Uh, it's important that you know what, what you're being measured by. This is the FICO score measurement um, chart, pie chart. Uh, your payment history represents 35% of your score. That's the on-time payment or even the delinquent payment. The delinquent payment, it rep represents 35% of your score. Your capacity, that's the percentage of credit limit that is available to you and also what has been used represents 30% of your score. So if you're using too much of your credit limit, that has a negative impact on your score. The mix of credit, this is installment versus revolving. These things are looked upon and it has an impact on your score, 10% of your score. Um, accumulation of debt represents 10% of your score. In the last six to 18 months, the number of inquiries and the number of open accounts. Right now, my score has gone down because recently I bought a brand new car. And, and because I bought that brand new car, even though my score is good, my score has always, well, I can't say it's always been good. I'm going to be honest with you. When I was in college, my score was horrible. Uh, but when I learned about credit, just as we're teaching you tonight, I made it a concerted effort to always manage my debts properly. I understood the, the scoring model and I worked within that scoring model in order to have a better score. OK, and um, but my score went down because I bought that car. And the one thing that you need to know what's coming out in the future, it's, it's already out there. Some of you are pulling your own score. You're pulling the Vantage score. This is the FICO scoring model and the breakdown on how things are gauged based on the FICO scoring model. There's also the Vantage scoring model, and that scoring model is a tad different than this particular scoring model. But know that it exists and be able to understand both 
when you're doing the comparison, okay? It's important that you do that. You can also pull a copy of your credit score from myfico.com and pull all three scores um, from all three bureaus. It's gonna cost you somewhere around $67. I do that at least twice a year for myself. I get the free report, but I also pull all three credit reports. It's version, the FICO score version number eight, uh, which is a much higher score, but it gives you an idea along with the reason codes to help you understand why your score is what it is. Let's take a look at the next slide. Thank you. Know that depending upon your age, you have to set priorities. When I was 17 and in college, my priorities were totally different. When Willie and I got married and had Tamika, had a little baby, my priorities changed from when I was 17. When Willie and I now today, he's 70 and I'm 69, my priorities are totally different. So as we age, our priorities change. Next slide. So look at you, regardless of what your age would be, you have to write down your priorities. You need to know what they are and then set your plan. Right now, I'm on the plan for retirement. There are certain things that I have to do in order to prepare for retirement. There, there are things that I have to look at in order to be ready for retirement. So we have to set those plans in place. Don't do like I did. I, I, I got married. I, I felt my husband was going to take care of me. He was going to always be there. And, and, and I'm very thankful that, that he is. But he also retired. His money changed when he retired. Although he's still working, he's got his own little side hustle uh, with a barbecue restaurant. But his whole life has changed. And so as we age, our life will change. So for me, I didn't start really thinking about retirement until my husband retired. And that I wasted a lot of time. Don't waste the time. Start preparing now. If you're young now, start now. If you're old now, start now. I started saving, really concentrating on saving, not until I was 53 years old. And that's a long time to wait. That There's a lot of years behind you. I can't catch up fast enough, you know? And so start now, regardless of what your age is, whether you're 40, 50, 60, it doesn't matter. Start now. That's that's my message to you. Let's take a look at the so, next slide. And, yeah. and when you start now, yeah. the sooner you start, the less of a pain you'll feel on a on a monthly basis saving for it that's yes. one thing and if you have a plan it will help drive your shopping plan so you'll you'll really take seriously having a budget because Absolutely. you'll understand the choices you're making the opportunity cost of you overspending at christmas means that's less you're going to have to put away for retirement <laughs> you can't finance retirement yeah so you gotta you gotta act what your value system is you and understand what you do today does affect what you can do tomorrow. It can, it can. And, and, and that's why it's so important that you start now. Um, you can't afford to wait. You know, we, we talk about um, planning uh, for your money and, and all of that and not waiting, but there are others that are planning for your money. There are others while you're shopping for the holidays, there are folks right now thinking about how can they move your money from your bank account into their bank account. And, and I can't do this class without talking about shopping fraud, identity theft, and all of that, and how we have to protect ourselves. We can't be naive in, in this world today thinking it's not going to happen to me. I can tell you many stories of consumers that didn't think it would happen to them. Um, I, I've been in this business for over 30 years 
working with consumers, helping consumers uh, build not only a credit presence, but also helping them to achieve home ownership and also start their, their saving journey because it's so important that we, we talk about these things. And, and even though I've been in this business for all these years, I've been scammed. And um, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say uh, someone got my ATM card number and they took $8,500 out of one of my bank accounts. Now I did get my money back, but it just shows you, it doesn't matter who you are, how smart you are, what industry you're in, who your mama and daddy is, it really doesn't matter. All of us can be scammed. There are individuals that are working toward that end. So protect yourself from fraud, from scams that um, you don't even think that could happen to you. Let's go to the next slide. There are whole countries working to scam. So yes, keep that in mind. <laughs> So there are mail scams. You know, it happens every day. My dad got one uh, the night before he died. Daddy got a, a and well, no, he got this weeks before he, he passed away. But daddy got a letter saying that he had won a um, million dollars. Some some crazy scam. It was a lottery scam that daddy was the winner that he had won. And but he would only get the money if he would pay a certain amount. And he did. He kept paying, he kept paying. The night of my dad's death, daddy wrote a letter and um, it was really, it, it really broke my heart when I read it because he told us that he had won this money and he wanted to give the money to his children. There's eight of us and he wanted to make sure he left us something, not just the house, not just the little money he had in the bank, but he wanted to leave us something big. And he thought, that this mail scam, this this um, the winning, he had won the lottery, won some kind of lottery. Um, he thought for sure he was going to get it, but he had to pay the money. He paid money for it a, a while. He got uh, to a point uh, the night before he died. He wrote the folks a letter. He said, "How dare you? How dare you scam senior citizens? I will not pay you another dime." How dare you? It happens, folks. So I'm saying, get angry. Don't get taken. Let them know that you're not going to scam me. Protect your PII, your personal identification information. Protect your cards. Be careful of the, the uh, ATM or the machines that you, you insert your, your card into because that's how I was scammed. It was only out of one of two places. Either my, my bank had a skimmer at the ATM or the restaurant that my husband and I had attended the day before I was scammed, okay? But I would, they had my ATM number. I keep that number with me. It could have only been taken through a skimmer. And so you really want to protect yourself. It's not just mail scam scams. There are other <laughs> scams that are out there as well. Herman, so, I think you've got a comment. Yeah, if you suspect, like you get a phone call, that's that should be a flashing red light. If somebody calls you talking about some deal or some opportunity or the IRS is looking for you. IRS is never going to call you on the telephone, by the way. So if you get a call like that, you have my permission to have some fun. So you said, OK, hey, hang on. Let me let me get a pencil and paper and go watch TV until the next commercial comes on. <laughs> they come back. You still there? Yeah, man, I can't. I'm having a heck of a time finding this pencil and paper. Stay right there. Go watch some more TV. Next commercial comes on. You still at the pen I got ran out of ink. I'll be right back. <laughs> Have fun. Absolutely. That's, That's a good one, Herman. That's a real good one. Because they're there. Let's let's see the next slide. Thanks, Herman. Shopping scams. You're you're wanting, I mean, it's all about the holidays, right? You're out there buying gifts. You get buy gift cards. Just recently on the news here in Florida, they talked about gift cards that were purchased as gifts to give to someone that the person who received the card 
had nothing, no value at all on the card. There's a new way for scammers to remove the actual dollar value from the card before you even use it. So be careful of that. That can happen. I don't know how it's being done, but it's being done. Definitely something that's happening during the holidays. Next, next um, slide, please. Um, some, some tips to protect yourself. Uh, only shop on secure websites. Make sure you see the lock at the top of the, um, on the, of the site. Make sure that you see the HTTPS uh, that indicates it's a secured site. Uh, do not shop using public Wi-Fi connections. You know, I don't do it. Don't look at your, your bank account using public Wi-Fi. Don't go to the library looking up your banking information. Be suspicious of deals that are too good to be true. Avoid sellers who use pressure tactics to get you to buy. Be weary of social media ads. Be very careful of that. Use a, a credit card to purchase instead of a debit card or a prepaid card. Um, set up bank account alerts on notification. Notification, when your balance reaches a certain amount that you're notified of it. Never give out sensitive information like social security numbers and account numbers. Search, uh, from, the, uh, search from the, for the seller and the word scam uh, to vet them before sending money. Uh, if something doesn't feel right, that's that inner thing in you trying to tell you to walk away. That's what it's all about. Walk away. We got a couple. We got a couple of comments here. Okay. Um, for more, uh, let's see. We got. Uh, they walked away with our card. One person, uh, and they said also, when you give your card to someone at a store or restaurant, this happened to us. The next day, someone tried to buy an electronic from Walmart. <laughs> So don't, don't be afraid to call and check your, your, your recent transactions. Absolutely. If you go out the day after or the two days after, just call and check on your recent transactions. And please, please, please always look at your statement to make sure that the, the purchase that show up are truly yours. Absolutely. Thank and you. And keep your receipts. Keep your receipts, too, because it, it's you. not just a wrong purchase. Sometimes it's a wrong amount. Absolutely, Herman. Absolutely. You know, I I believe and 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 maybe it's because I'm so old, but I check my bank account often, and um, that that was the only way that I saw that this charge on my account, and I was able to get the money back. But it took time to get the money back. Um, and the inconvenience of having to wait, just the whole, uh, it upsets your system knowing that someone has access to your uh, information and they were able to pull that amount of money out of your account. So you've got to be very, very careful uh, and, with and, that. And another check is balance your checkbook. Yes. I know some people go through life and they don't balance the checkbook. They just, am I close to balance it to the penny? You want yes. me, you work hard for your money. You should have the right to spend your money. Absolutely. Not anybody else. Let's see the next slide. So um, we're all at risk. Like we said, uh, millions of people are being taken advantage of through identity theft, through um, all so sorts of scams we and, and fraud. So we've got to be very careful. They're doing it right in the privacy of their home and they're stealing from you, me and anybody else that they can steal from. So be very careful of that. We are all at risk. Nobody is exempt. There are all sorts of scammers that are out there. Let's take a look at the next slide please. Identity theft, if you can populate the, the next thing on this slide for me. Thank you. Go back. Um, look at the age group and the amount of identity theft that have occurred in the particular age groups. And it is continuing to grow. You know, these scammers have gotten so sophisticated they have done, they've looked at all age groups 
and they have decided that there are certain tactics that work better for certain age groups. For a younger group, it's more about social media. They're being taken advantage of through, through, through social media. Um, as we get older, then it becomes another type of scan. It uh, scam. It may be through through the internet, or it could be uh, emails. It could also be um, the sweepstakes scam and other things that are more in tune with a, a much older group. So it could be telephone calls, robocalls, all of those things. So each age group is being attacked differently. And it's important that we know um, our different age groups. The biggest culprit is identity theft. That is how folks are being taken the most through identity theft. They're, they're using our identity and they're taking things from us through our identity. So protect your PII, um, personal identification information. Make sure you do that because that's the only way to try and uh, reduce the amount of scammers that come in your direction. Let's take a look at the next slide. So ID theft, there are some things that you can do. Call the company where the fraud occurred. Uh, make sure you put a freeze on your account. Uh, change logins, passwords, pin, pin numbers, all of those things frequently. Next slide, please. You also want to place a fraud alert on your account, uh, the account that's in question. You want to do that with the three bureaus. That's important. Make sure you file a police report. Now, I'm going to tell you up front that filing a police report can be difficult. And most police departments don't want to handle an identity theft type um, scam uh, that reported to the police department. They don't have enough manpower in order to deal with your particular scam. But still, if, if your police department will take the report, offer a police, do a police report. For my $8,500 scam that was played on me, my police department would not do a police report. And so you want to document all of that. You definitely want to call the bureaus. You definitely want to let them know. You definitely want to try and protect yourself any way you can. And, and most importantly, you should fill out an affidavit of forgery. If you go to the Federal Trade Commission, they've got an excellent website that you can go to to report all scams. They are the ones that report the scammers to. They collect all of the data and report it to the um, the cent Centennial Report. I, I don't have the actual name. I think I'm giving it to you as a resource, uh, but you really need to be able to, to report that. Report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Let's go to the next slide, please. Step three would be to the FTC, Federal Trade Commission. All right, thank you. Um, go. You can also go to identitytheft.gov. That's part of the FTC to report the um, scam and let them know. Fill out the report with them. They're not going to police it or anything of that nature, but there's a record of it. And you're going to need that if uh, something happens in a big way and you have to uh, go back to the police department. If the police department will accept the um, police report that you're giving, given, make sure you keep that police report with you always because you don't know if that person has done anything illegal that could cause you to go to jail. Uh, we've heard of that uh, has happened to consumers. It doesn't happen a lot, but it can. So you really want to protect yourself from that. Next slide, please. So know your rights. That's what it's all about. Make sure you know your rights. If if it's if it happens, you got to report it. You've got to report it in a timely a manner. You can put a fraud alert on your credit report. You can always get a copy of your credit report if you are a victim of identity theft, and you can report uh, request a copy of your report more frequently than if you've not been a victim of identity theft. Next slide, please. 
If you've not seen this particular video, I want to encourage you to see this video. We're not going to play it tonight. Uh, we will not play it tonight, Eric, but it, it is the funniest video, but it is so true and it's called identity theft. And um, I really want you to see it because it happens and it happens a lot. So uh, Mr. Bigelow there uh, caught the, the person that stole his identity. Uh, using his name um, and um, getting uh, in accidents, offering uh, police, re not police reports, but uh, insurance and all of this stuff. And, and it really created havoc in his life. So if you've not seen this, you definitely want to see it. Uh, next slide, please. There's also, and this is the sad part, you know, I used to see this when I was counseling a lot uh, where there was ch children, child identity theft, where parents took on their child's name to open up a um, open up cable to get a phone in the child's name to do all sort of things in the child's name because they had already messed up their own name. So um, it happens. It happens all the time. And um just be mindful of that and there, you know, just be careful of it. I won't say any more. Just be careful of that. Next slide, please. Romance scams. It happens a lot, particularly with the elderly, with individuals that are by themselves. It could be a man or a woman um, that is conducting this scam. It, it happens and, and we are vulnerable and we have to protect ourselves. Next slide, please. These are all real life stories. This happens. Let's go through these pretty quickly, Eric. Um, whether you're buying um, a, a ticket at at a, um, a facility, you're, there's an event that you want to attend. Somebody's selling tickets on the side. You don't go through the venue. You buy it from someone on the street. Um, and often it's a scam. Next slide, please. The IRS scam. <laughs> This happens, and I'm not laughing about it, but I thought that I had caught somebody uh, that was doing an IRS scam, but it, it wasn't that. Um, but it happens there during the, not, not the holidays, but during tax season, we hear of individuals being called saying that they're the IRS and you owe money and this is what you need to do. Go ahead and get some gift cards. And, um, but I want you to get the gift cards from uh, Lowe's. I want you to get a card for um, different places that makes no sense that are, that's going to the IRS. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Next slide, please. There are so many resources that I've made available to you in this particular handout. If you've not gotten a copy of it yet, you will get it, get a copy of it. Herman, um, will you be sending out the resources to the attendees list? I can, I can, okay. if, uh, email, uh, by email. So again, uh, if, if you, um, if you, uh, tell you what, if you are, with Enon, um, let me know that, and I will send them to Reverend Murphy. If you are with Mount Zion, uh, set, let me know that, and I'll send them to Pastor Jones. If you're not affiliated with either one of those, just write me and give me your email address, and I'll email it to you. And again, my email is in the chat, hpalmer at nfcc.org. Uh, absolutely. And if you're with DRN, uh, Diversified Resource Network, you can send an email to me directly through the support tab on the website and uh, just tell me you want a copy of this presentation. All of the support uh, email addresses come to me directly and I will send it to you. Let's uh, take a look at all the resources that we have, Eric. We've got uh, resources for NFCC. Um, this is where Herman is from. And Herman, if you can get back on camera, uh, also, um, yeah, if you're there still. And um, I'm not sure if uh, Pastor Kevin Murphy can get back on. Uh, um, just uh, if if you want to get additional information and you need help, NFCC 
This is their website. Herman Palmer represents NFCC. Um, he's there to be able to help you and direct you to someone who can. Uh, Monda represents uh, Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac offers uh, a vast number of resources and tools to um, consumers. So uh, just make sure you take a screenshot of this page. If you are with uh, DRN or you don't know about Diversified Resource Network, that's my organization. Uh, we have a consumer page that has uh, videos and all sorts of great information for you. There's also HUD housing counselors out there that can help you. And, and don't forget to pull your annual credit report through um, annualcreditreport.com. And if you've got companies that have been have taken advantage of you and they are not doing the right thing, you can, can file a dispute with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And CFPB is excellent about trying to um, get a resolution for consumers that uh, once it's been reported. So uh, definitely you could go to the CFPB. Let's do the next slide and we'll just move through these pretty quickly, Eric. And so as we go through these, keep in mind, people always wonder, where can I go to get safe, trustworthy information? This is it. The, go to the, use these resources because mm -hmm. they are trustworthy. Yeah. They are absolutely trustworthy. I want to point out one, and that's the protection for older adults because that's the life I live right now. And, and that is a, a document from CFPB. CFPB is our, our friend. Uh, they're there to help protect consumers, so you need to know about them. Next slide, Eric. I can't thank Herman enough. I can't thank you enough for hanging in there and staying with us on tonight's class. It's been real for me. You've had I've had an opportunity to tell you a lot of my stories, but it's all truth. And and we're about trying to help you um, just have a wonderful holiday season uh, and not have any drama associated with it. And so if, if we can be of help, you can always reach out to me through Diversified Resource Network. You can always reach out to Herman. And, and I'm very thankful to um, Monda and Pastor Kevin Murphy and all of the, the entire team, Pastor Cedric, uh, LaTanya, um, Gonzalez, just all of our partners who make this dream come true and bring this information. So if you ever hear about any classes that are being provided by NFCC and the, um, the, the um, ministry, you really want to hop on that and be a part of it. We welcome you to be a part of it. At this time, I'm going to turn it back over to our fearless leader, Mr. Herman Palmer. Herman? Thank you, Cora. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Really appreciate the time you've given us and the thought you've given in organizing the presentation. I got to thank my man Eric Brandt for being the producer director of this night's event. Got to thank my fellow committee members, uh, Manda, our guest, Manda Webb from Freddie Mac, Latanya Gonzalez, uh, Reverend Kevin Murphy, and Pastor Cedric Jones. Thank you all. I want to thank the churches. Mount Zion Baptist Church. I want to thank Enon Tabernacle Church and all our other church partners. Um, I want to go over a couple of key points that stuck with me. Um, your mental state impacts your financial state. Money is the fuel to get you to the destination. It is not the destination. Pay yourself first. Make you your priority. Uh, what you do today affects what you do tomorrow. Uh, understand your money story. That's important because it determines how you fly. Understand what motivates you, why it motivates you. Uh, how has your behavior impacted your credit? That's a question we all need to ask ourselves. And have a plan. Know who you're buying for during each holiday season and, and don't add any last minute additions because that blows up your budget. Understand how much you plan to spend said differently, have a budget. Um, do not associate the amount you spend with how much you love that individual. And unless guilt, and I say this all the time, if guilt isn't going to add some money 
to your shopping budget, tell it to be quiet and go sit somewhere. <laughs> know your priorities and then make sure your behaviors reflect your priorities and beware of scams. Those are the key insights. Again, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to write us. Uh, as we conclude this session, uh, I'm going to ask you to also, please, if you would, in the Q&A, if you could just list your church affiliation, what church you're from or what organization you're from, that's one. If you could also list, we're in a process of planning for 2024, throw out some topics you want us to present on. I know investing is one. I know credit is one. I know wills and estate planning is always popular. So keep that in mind. I'm going to pass it on to Manda and see if Manda, do you have anything you want to share? Yeah, I really wanted to. Um, I appreciate the points of the insights um, that you just shared, Herman. And I think for me, I was really impacted by um, the scams. I mean, we're in a season where inflation um, is historically high. Um, people still want what they want, and we really are going to have to protect ourselves and look out because there's, you know, an uprise on smash and grabs and snatches and card jackings and everything else. So we really, really have to um, be careful during the holidays. I know many of us we're covered, but we do have to at least exercise, um, you know, the common sense and just, just kind of be aware of our surroundings because we do have a tendency to get caught up with you know, all the holiday hype. So I can appreciate that. And I also appreciate, um, you know, just really digging deep to take a look at soul searching, if you will, uh, about what is your money story and how are you going to take that money story and use it for good um, uh, to improve, you know, whatever it is that you may have some challenges with, whether it's savings or whether it's um, creating more assets or whether it's being able you know, to plan something to pass down to family members or children. Um, it's just really important that we have the entire package and, and that that is um, supplemented by being healthy, uh, healthy of mind, body, spirit. So I, I just, um, Ms. Corey, I think you did a phenomenal job and I just want to thank you uh, for the opportunity to, to, to come by and hang with you tonight. So thank you. Say ditto. So thank you, <laughs> Yes, thank you all so much for taking time to join us and giving us your kind attention. We at the NFCC Faith Based Alliance uh, wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving and a very safe and happy holiday season. Have a great one. See you in 2024.